45, so. It's 46, so you can yeah. start. Yeah. So when I'm the start, um, I said it briefly that uh, it's not a technical talk, it's more about the use case, social internet that was built for the city of Reykjavik. Um, my name is Patti. Uh, if you were in the previous talk, uh, then yeah, we may come to that later, but I am the owner of the com Drupal company OneX Internet, which is located here in, in Frankfurt. We also have offices in, in Reykjavik and Barcelona. I have a bachelor in computer science, I did management uh, engineering as my master in TU Wien. And I've been doing Drupal since 2007, since version 5. I'm not programming anymore, unfortunately. But I, once in a while, during weekends like this, I can start. I can do it again. Uh, I have a husband who's also speaking at the same time now, about the Ikov. And these two kids that make my life a little bit more fun and more difficult. So the company One X Internet, like I said earlier, we are in uh, here. Most of us are here in Frankfurt. We are 18 people in total. Uh, we come basically from, I think, 12 nationalities. Uh, we try to have most of the team located here, but we have two in Barcelona and then three in, in Iceland. The rest is here at the office. And we speak probably, I don't know, at least 12, even not even 15 or 20 languages. So we speak English at work. Um, what we mainly, we have been working, of course, with Drupal 8 now since, or we are since 2010. We've been working with Drupal 8 now since two years, one year. Uh, then I am the founder of Drupal Iceland, which uh, then did this, uh, the coolest camp in Iceland, literally, the coolest camp in all ways. It was really cold. We had a record of snow in Iceland during this camp, like an Icelandic record since 1940 of snow. And we had snow until here, and we had to drive out with jeeps to get people to come to the session because everybody was stuck at home. Uh, otherwise, we, we did the installation the ECOF, the distribution, and we also do a lot with the commerce, and especially the commerce too. Uh, we have launched already three shops with uh, Drupal 8 Commerce, uh, which is also, we are going to talk about in a separate session. So enough about that. Uh, yeah, this is a picture from the Drupal camp in Iceland that was now in February. It's part of our team. You know, it was really cold. Five minutes, probably five minutes later, it was sun. So we are, we are going to probably do this again next year, but then during uh, summertime when it doesn't get dark. So we are trying to organize like always the, the cool social camps. Uh, so a little bit about Iceland. Have you been to Iceland? Has anybody been to Iceland? Yeah, <laughs> two, three. Oh, good. So for the rest of you, we are 332,000, um, approximately the size of Wiesbaden, a little bit bigger than Wiesbaden. Uh, we are very good in football, uh, much better than Wiesbaden. Uh, more facts is, so the country is very big, and Reykjavik is there on the left side all the way down. In Reykjavik there lives 122,000, which is approximately 37% of the Icelandic as country nation lives in Reykjavik. Then we have all these cities around, or little cities around Reykjavik, so we are probably around 50% at least, not or even 60% that are in uh, in the area. Which comes to the talk, this is the logo of the city of Reykjavik, which brings us to the topic is that in Iceland and in Reykjavik we have uh, the city and in the city of Reykjavik there works, there work 9,000 people. So this is a very different model that, than you have here, for example, in Germany. So in the Scandinavian model, like the people who work, like everybody work for the city who is really doing something. So the kindergartens, the schools, like uh, bus drivers, you know, everything that is related to the, what the city provides, they are also employees of the city. So I think about like around about 5% of the workforce in, uh, in Iceland or in Reykjavik or something, I don't know, remember what it said. They just work there in the city. So, 
the challenge, so what Reykjavik, what the city of Reykjavik has been doing is that um, in 2001 they were using an Icelandic CMS system. Then they decided to go to the German, you know, like the rocket steel, like they call it in Iceland. And they went to Content XSL. Does anybody have an experience with that system? No, they also didn't like it, so <laughs> good. And around about 2011, they made the decision in the city to make everything Drupal. That hasn't been completely rolled out, but um, we are in the phase, so all the big websites, so Reykjavik.is, the internet, Visit Reykjavik, like all of the big systems are made with Drupal. The schools are still in Joomla. Um, there are plenty of small pages made with WordPress and Wix, uh, but this is a rollout that is going to happen slowly to take everything and move it over to Drupal. And one of that, like what they say is that we decided to use Drupal, and this was a, a talk when the Drupal camp in Iceland, the mayor of uh, Reykjavik came and talked to the Drupal community and just said, you know, saying thank you to everybody. Uh, as we, of course, decide, or Reykjavik decides to use Drupal to do the responsible use of taxpayers' money. So you don't pay license fees to these big corporations. And not only that, uh, but also to have the flexibility to work with very many agencies, very many freelancers, and not just be stuck with this one company, uh, which was their previous uh, experience, which was, of course, not good. Uh, so, a little bit before I go into the details, and this is maybe what I'm going to go to then back in the end of the session, what is a structure that comes to a project like an internet project? So, how, how is, who are the key people in a project like that? So, if we just, you know, I, I dismissed all the other departments and offices, but basically the mayor's office has this information PR department where the web people are and everybody was taking care of all the web. And then in the office of operation and service, there you have the IT department, which is, uh, and there is a big conflict. And we are gonna go to that later on when I showed you the internet, what problems we actually had with this year and what the learning is for us and hopefully for all of you, if you're working with a government, uh, how, yeah, I'm not sure if it can be avoided, but at least you could know about it before that this is not so simple. Structures, plus all the politics inside of the, you know, the project, all the people that are involved. So, this was just so you have the idea. Please ask questions on the fly. Um, so, what did Reykjavik want to achieve with an internet solution? So this was the old, so basically all employees, all 9,000 employees, they go and they open up the browser every morning and the internet shows and pops up. It was a very static internet, internet solution before. Um, it was nearly never updated, it was this boring content and the only thing that people did was to go on it to check what was for lunch. And that was the main function of the internet. Plus there was just a, a complete, chaos in the whole document structure and information structure in there. Um, the people couldn't communicate anything because it wasn't fun or anything like that. Plus, and what actually happened is that everybody was just founding their own groups on Facebook and they were starting to share information on Facebook. Maybe even sometimes confidential information between each other because it was just easier. Um, actually, going back to Facebook, you know, if, has anybody uh, experience with Facebook for businesses? Well, Facebook for businesses is basically an <coughs> a internet solution that Facebook provides. Um, Reykjavik is, you know, because they saw the need of the people to be in this constant communication. So what Reykjavik did that they allow the people to be in this Facebook business to do all the, to organize the football events in the evening and all that. Uh, but here, or on the new social internet, all the information is on. And there should be no communication about anything related to anything in the city on Facebook. Except just to have fun, maybe. So, how was the process, and how is a process in a project like this? It started with consulting and concepting. You know, we sat down, 
And this is just one of many, like, this is one of many meetings that we were there. You know, it was about, you always had a big group of people, you know, you start to draw up, like, what are the main functionality? What do we like on the current internet? What do we want to have on the new internet? And we started to put that into, you know, on, on these yellow notes uh, to see what are the main functionalities, which then, of course, resulted in a very detailed wireframe. So of course in Icelandic I didn't translate that one, I tried to translate everything else. But we then like, there was ping pong between the, the people involved about the wireframes and one of the main issues was actually to, you know, people are in different departments. I don't know if you're familiar with the government structure, you know, you are in the, the schools you're under the school department, or you're under the welfare department, or you're under the sports department. And we decided to like color code, give people these little um, badges depending on what department you are, so it's more recognizable, and also serve the content based on in what department you are. So obviously the people in the schools, they are interested in other things than the people in the welfare, for example. So the main functions like these are only the main functions that we tried to, that we figured out in the consulting phase or the discovery phase. The main function was we want to use Active Directory. So anybody that doesn't know or like, do you know what Active Directory is? LDAP. Basically this, uh, as you know, you, an Active Directory is where all the login information and passwords are kept for the people to log into the domain on their computers. And what we said that we don't want people to have separate accounts on Drupal, on the Drupal internet system, because before it was like that, that everybody was just logged in the internet. It was only also an only one login in that sense. But we wanted to make it user-based so we could serve the people different information. And with that, we wanted, of course, that it would be sim so simple for people to be logged in via their Active Directory account. So that um, integration we did with LDAP module and single sign-on module, it's Drupal 7, um, it just worked out of the box pretty well. So no hurdles there. Then we put people into these taxonomies, so we grouped them into these departments and we served them the content depending on where you're coming from. So that was also with taxonomies, just really simple. Uh, then we gave the people option to uh, choose their own content, to flag, to make favorites. You know, then we used the flagging module. You know, we tried as much as we could not to do any uh, extra programming here and special modules because we want the city to maintain this solution and they have to maintain it afterwards. So we decided to use flags. That was also very nice if you have experience with flags, simple to install, you know, you can just then it's basically the same as like in Facebook. That starts the same, you can like and unlike. So that's how we like allow people to, um, if you're a manager, for example, you, wanna, you are always going in to check information of how to greet a new employee. And before it was like, oh, where was it again? Oh, yeah, you have to go to the here and here and here, but now in this system, you can just mark it, you can flag it, you can say it's my favorite, and it pops up on your dashboard. Yeah? Then, um, of course, very important was all this document madness in there. All these documents about processes, how to work, how to greet people, how to, you know, when to go to lunch, if you get pregnant, what do you do then, and all that. So that had to be tagged too. We did that with the media module and just uh, created all kinds of fields on top of the, the files. So you can search, you can say like, give me all the minutes, give me all the processes, give me, you know, depending on, on what department, so we, that was really nice. We connect to their human resources database too, not only the active directory, but we also want to get like information from the people, like what are the phone number, and you know, you could also store that in the active directory, but Reykjavik doesn't, they have a separate <laughs> human resource, Oracle system, database, that just takes care of all the information, like when are they born, when do they have birthday, when, like a picture of them, you know, do they have a cell phone. Uh, then we we were in the, or I was in ba 
Barcelona, no, it was in Amsterdam. In the Drupalcon in Amsterdam, I was in a lightning talk, and there was a Wunderkraut, previously Wunderkraut, now Wunder, Germany, or at least that part of it. And they were talking about that they have this bonus system in a company, so every Friday or once per month, um, they throw a dice, and if six comes up, then they check into the hug system. And I'm like, what is a hug system? No, a hug system is something that you, you can give hugs. You know, so I like, I want to give Peter a hug to come to this session, and I do that online, I can give like X many hugs. And they started to do this as a positive thing, like a, it's not about, you know, talking about other employees, but, you know, to do give so compliments or positive hugs to people. And they realized, they found out, for example, that some employees that were never noticed we were always helping everybody else, but the manager didn't really, really notice that, that that was happening, and suddenly everybody was giving hugs to that person. And then, of course, when they throw the dice and they were going to give out the 5,000 euro bonus, you know, then that person would just get the bonus because he's been like obviously helping the company a lot. We took this idea, we introduced this idea to the city of Reykjavik, and they loved it. I'm going to show you a little bit later how we did it. We did it a little bit more simple and of course not related to bonuses <laughs> because that is not allowed. But we just created a compliment system that was based on this idea from Wunder. And then what was most important, we just did a lot of fun stuff. So that was what we realized in the consulting phase, concept phase, what we, what a social internet, and that's why we call it a social internet. We, it's because it is a little bit more than just a little internet, it's also with interactions. So the design phase was uh, the most difficult part ever of this whole system because everybody wanted to talk about you know, what was good and what was not, of course. One of the things that we, we, we thought about having icons for the welfare department, and there we wanted to have a picture of a like a like an avatar of a woman and a man and one child, and we thought it was a really good idea because welfare families, you know, that was just like completely cut off the table because you know we have in Iceland a very open-minded country, and you know to have a woman and a man as a family, that's of course like you know you often have three people in a family, you have two men and one woman, or you have <coughs> one man and another man and so like all our awesome ideas, they completely like, no, it's not possible. So it had to be very simple <laughs> to serve everybody. So that like that was a little bit frustrating for us to like not to be able to do all the cool stuff that we thought was cool. So it resulted in uh, here's just the login page, which is of course very simple and very boring. But I want just to show you the login page because the login page is that you can do this automatic sign-in where you just click the button, you get automatically signed in. But you can also use your Active Directory login, password and, and ID to log in. But if you don't know that and if you know your Drupal user, you can also log in as a Drupal user that is connected to your Active Directory user. So, so you can basically uh, uh, go to the system any point in time. But I did a little bit of, I, I tried to translate this into English as much as I could. Um, that's why the Google Translate comes there on top. I didn't, you know, manage to get that away very quickly. So this is basically the, the front page of the system. This is your dashboard. Here you are being served the information that you need to have. You know, here are the fun stuff, like the green steps, or, you know, it could play again, so, let's see. On top here you have the mega menus, very big mega menus that have human resources, e-procurement. Then you have the offices, you have the different color coding for the offices. Uh, the sport office, you know, here you have a kind of employee, you have some ads. Here are the compliments, I'm going to show that to you in a little bit more detail. The retail section, you can sell something like, or give away something. You see who has a birthday today. You know, you also see who has a birthday depending on where you are working. Like in the, in the, in the address that you are related to. So, 
like you see from the from the design, it's very it's dull in that sense. It's very simple boxes, uh, white and blue, but uh, the str yeah. So you can also look, look at the hearts here. You can you can like, you know. This is what people are just using. I just took this screenshot here earlier this morning. Just so this uh, is all going to be available, uh, so you can look at it. Uh, because this is also information I got permission from them to, to show this. There's nothing there confidential on this. Except maybe that uh, somebody has a birthday today that we didn't ask for allowance, but I think a random name is, is okay. Um, most important, of course, to find employee of these 9,000 people. So the next uh, thing I want to show you is the compliment section, because that was the fun thing. So you go to all compliments, and there are like thousands of compliments in there. I don't know, maybe like thousands. But, you know, mostly women are using it. It's really interesting to see that like 95% of the people giving compliments are women. And they love it. You can give, look, you can give a thumb up, you can give a flower, or you can, that was also, by the way. I do not want to go into details of about thing, what was allowed to give and what not. <laughs> uh, so now I'm creating a compliment and giving it to you. You are great. And then you can choose one of this and it's in the system. You can also give it to a user, specific user, or you can give it to a department. So we allow uh, that to be done. So really simple, like simple stuff that makes people really happy. So this is a typical boring information page. This is an information page about the sports uh, department and all their links. They're like, if you start pressing here, you get the subtree of a subtree. Uh, has like a typical information about where the offices are, what is, who to call. There are maybe important documents on the side. They're that related. Uh, this is the staff directory. Uh, by the way, on all pages, there is always like a big thing that says, does this page need, uh, do, you, do you have a comment about this page? So that is very important that they want to have feedback. So they place that very big, it's here, it's a web form about, it's on every page on the site. But here you have like an information about him, he put in a picture of himself. Mm, you can search by giving me everybody who is in this department or all that. Just a typical uh, search. And what's more interesting here is that you can, the people can put in their skills and extra information. For example, I have a cat. And then you can look and then you can find everybody who has a cat. So maybe more interesting than saying Drupal. And mm -hmm. you can find everybody who knows Drupal. They were, they were actually advertising it in-house and tell people, hey, put in your skills. So other people can say, okay, hey, give me everybody in my department that know Excel. And then they can, you know, if you have problems with Excel, you can then really easily go to that person. So, and these functions we also put on top just to make sure that people go in there. You know, it was all thought about, like, how can we get people there? Uh, the document search is, of course, very static, or like very simple. But everything's based on, uh, in this case, it's media files with uh, fields and taxonomy references. So you can basically say, okay, give me everything that has been like a mi minute, like a m meeting note, or give me everything that is this and this. So it's very simple um, to search in it, and they find the information relatively good. So the programming of the whole part, after we designed it, of course, you saw the programmed version, but like the design part, but the programming took about six months. It was a very eight cell process. We tried to do like the small parts first, like the simple, like always deliver a small version and then add to it features. Um, so it was around about six months. Uh, then came this phase that was very difficult because now all the people in the departments have to start putting content because if we don't have content, we don't have internet. And we didn't want to migrate the content from the old page because that was very unstructured and they wanted to start from new. So this was a battle inside of the city to try to get people to 
put in information and data in their basically free time because there is not a job description for that in every department. So this was just, it took a while, took a long time and we had to help them. You know, we had to write a lot for them to get them going and create empty pages. Uh, and then, yay, we have content, we have programmed everything, we have designed and we were really happy, you know, everybody at the city that was involved in the project was really happy. And now I'm talking about uh, one part of the city. And then the process started to be like this for a while. And why? Like I told you before, uh, we have the IT department and we have this department. Now they had to take the product over. And then there was no server. And it took a while to get a server. And now the, the fun starts because like, they were then thinking about yeah, what type of a server, you know, do we need maybe a better server if you were like, hey, it has been running on our development servers. We just gave them the information, but now that had to be discussed. <laughs> So what were the obstacles that happened? What happened is that two key employees of my web department, so two key employees of them, they just quit in the middle of the project. They quit because one went on a leave and the other one was still had planned it. So firstly, they left. So there came in new people with new ideas. And you're finished with your project and everybody's really happy. And then they come in like, yeah, but can we not just do a side menu instead of a mega menu? Like, what? <laughs> so, then finally, of course, we could start testing it and allowing really people to go in. And, uh, and finally, when we have all the content, we could really do testing. And then we, of course, had to figure that out, that the Active Directory was just not set up in a very optimal way. It had been working, but then, like, on all, in all schools, in all, like, people were really not everybody on the same instance of that then. I don't know the, the madness that came there. It took almost six months to fix that. And of course we couldn't touch that, nor the web department people, it was the IT. Then they decided, oh hey, this eight, uh, Active Directory stuff, let's split it up. Let's put, make one Active Directory for the schools. And like, you know, then like, okay, then we had to start to test that out again. Then, the city decided to, hey, let's change the human resource uh, application software. So we have to like start importing the stuff in differently, <laughs> you know, but everything was ready. Uh, so there was a lot of anger, like people were really frustrated, of course, uh, everywhere. Like we were frustrated, but you know, it was a good project. So for us it was less, but still we wanted to have the success so we could stand for, for example, here, tell everybody else how, how cool it is to make an internet in Drupal. This was the main point. So, but the end result was really great, but very late. Um, and the learning that we probably had to this was, uh, when you start a project like this, make sure, and with a big operation like this, with 9,000 people, employees, you know, make sure you as a, as a you know, like us, we are outsiders. Just make sure you have a really dedicated group, find out who can make decisions. Uh, make sure that there is a product owner, in this case then in both departments, and that these people like are all the way in and not just like hating it when they have to install a new system. And be quick, be as quick as you can because otherwise they start to change all systems. And then you, you know, can work on it and test, test, test. So these were just the learnings of this project. The project itself with all the functions of the internet that I showed you before, it's a big success. The people love using it. They go in there and, and building it with Drupal was a complete correct decision because you could use all of these contributor modules. Uh, we really had to do very little programming, like I said. Of course, we had to do adjustments for uh, certain structures or things, but the Drupal, like I've been saying this since, that Drupal is the perfect tool to create an internet solution, uh, and a solution like this that is with login users and all that. So you can find 
me on Twitter if you want to follow up on these topics. I'm also going to have two other sessions here. One, one is uh, after lunch about another page in Drupal 8 that we did with very uh, flexible content editing. So if you're interested in seeing how you can really use the maximum amount of paragraphs and CK editor, like with doing all kinds of magic, then come to that session. And then tomorrow I'm going to be talking about the art of estimation and how you actually can estimate better projects and get to a better result in the end and more better projects. Um, like I said again, follow up also on us in Drupal Iceland. If you have interest, check our uh, Twitter. And also the DCN Lights is of course over, but there will hopefully be the DC uh, Solstice event in either next year or the year after, where we're going to be doing sessions at midnight. Drupal session at midnight in the nature. And sprints are going to be also in the nature. So thanks. Any questions? Yes? Uh, are you planning to update your Drupal 8? No. So generally, everything in the city is in Drupal 7. Uh, also, the big city Reykjavik page. Uh, and the reason is that it's, it's also connected to more other Drupal systems. For example, uh, all meeting nodes within the city of Reykjavik, like all councils and all departments, all meeting nodes uh, are in a Drupal system. They're taking care of that and exported. And most of these sites are relatively new. It was most of them launched last year or the year before. We had the same experience by working with a television. Um, they are always a very late adapter, uh, and they because they most of the time they need to use very many config modules, and early it's just then too soon for them, and then we need to start programming, and that they don't like because then they can't maintain it because they they mostly don't have advanced Drupal developers, and not in Drupal eight at all. So no, but maybe this going to be Drupal nine and. How many years? Yeah. More questions? Uh, yes, two questions. Um, first of all, um, regarding the, the fun part, the hack or component system, is it still used today so much as much as on the first day? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's very much used, just constantly. Because I, I just wonder, because often people lose interest when they play it longer and then it starts. Yeah, yeah, I forgot to tell you, we went live with it uh, in last fall. But we still have now eight months, and really this is just growing and growing and growing. Mm -hmm. And we are found now thinking about, like you saw in the design, that it's a very little section on the left, and we are going to make much more out of it. Because of that. Uh, second question regarding the single sign on. I mean, that happens very often. That Departments, companies, or governments join or split up, and the IT gets to be learned to implement that, and users should start immediately to work in the CMS. Yeah. So, how, how difficult is it to solve to implement more than one source for a single sign on? What, what do you mean exactly? More than one source? You mean no, that? So, they split up into two active directories. Yeah. So, you have to connect both. Yeah. Did it work well? Or it actually went really well with uh, the LTAP module. You can really put in, uh, you can put in as many Active Directory sources uh, and services you want. And what happens though is, uh, as soon as a per so what we are also doing, we are also importing users in and the information about them. And what we saw, for example, the people were logging into the with a single sign-on before they were actually imported in. And then we started to get conflicts for that, for example, because then we had a automatically, because what the single sign-on does, it automatically, if you come for the first time and you are an Active Directory user, it automatically creates a Drupal user for you, uh, which then is not going to work with migration of uh, information from another data if we like, don't have, have that linked. Um, but we, bas we basically did not have any problems with the LDAP module in Drupal 7. And the single sign module, and like it's a lot of clicking, uh, it's a lot of uh, settings, and then the Active Directory has to be configured. 
in a way that it provides you this information and give it to you. Uh, but very, very nice. I was very happy with that. Yeah. Any more questions? No. Then just come to me at any point if you want to look at it or if you want to have more information. So, thanks. <laughs>